Welcome to this latest edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. I'm going to start with a reading from 1 Peter, chapter 5, beginning of verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now, there are some people who would proclaim that they're humble, and often they're, they're not humble at all. Um, and why is it saying we have to humble ourselves? It's because the first sin that broke the relationship with our Heavenly Father was pride. Satan, who was Lucifer, the most beautiful, beautiful angel in heaven, in charge of the worship and the praise and the music of heaven, thought that he was so beautiful he was like God, if not on a par with God. And humbling ourselves means that we understand how small we are in the scheme of things and how in need of the love and strength and blessing of the Lord we are day by day, moment by moment, and what God provides for us. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. If we are people of love, Scripture says that we are to see other people as better than ourselves. We know what we're like on the inside. And pride is a sin that we must flee from. It leads to arrogance and resentment and conflict with others. But when we do humble ourselves and we have God in his right place in our lives and in our minds and in our actions, we can cast all our anxieties on him because he cares for us. All our fears, our worries, our concerns. You know, consider the birds of the air. They don't spin or weave, but the Lord provides for them. James 4 verse 6 following says, but he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Grace is a free gift. No strings attached, an offer from our Heavenly Father. But to have access to this free gift, we have to flee from pride because God opposes the proud and Satan, Lucifer, was cast out of heaven because of the sin of pride. But he gives grace to the humble not only teaching us how to live, but helping us through the Holy Spirit how to live. And I'm not talking about false humility here. I'm talking about a heart that is humble. It goes on, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Humility is realizing that we don't know everything. We can't do everything, and without him, we can do nothing that will last. And submitting ourselves to God, the creator and sustainer of all things who designed you and me, is wisdom. It goes on, resist the devil, and he will flee from you.
often our minds are filled with a myriad of thoughts and challenges and temptations. And because of self or because of depression or loneliness, all sorts of things, we often give in to these temptations. We choose to give in to these temptations, but here it's saying, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Remember, Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights in the, in the desert. And how he resisted the devil? He quoted scripture. When he was hungry, I think that's an understatement, when he was really hungry, he was challenged to turn the stones into bread. And being God's son, he could have done it. Where he says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So he quoted scripture back to the enemy. And the enemy left him. It goes on, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is about relationship. God has given us free will to decide what, how, where, when. He's given us a way of escape from judgment. He's given us his words written down in scripture. He's given us a testimony that when he's touched us, how we've changed. So if we draw near to him through prayer and study and reading his word and waiting upon him, listening for his voice, but testing everything, because the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, then he will draw near to us. Often we pray and we give him a shopping list of the things we want. But God provides us what we need. He knows what we need. He knows what the birds need and he provides. It continues, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Lord wants us to have clean hands. Hands that are offered up in worship to him. You know, we some people pray like this. I pray like this, open-handed, open-hearted. Lord, I have nothing in my hands because I have nothing to offer. But anything that you give me, I receive with joy and thanksgiving. Now, thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. But also remembering we're sinners. And it talks about purifying our hearts. And that comes through recognizing our sin. Turning from it, repenting of it. Asking the Lord to wash us in his precious blood. That though they are as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. But it's interesting that it talks about being double-minded. When we're of split opinion... What actually happens is some days we follow the Lord and other days we don't because it doesn't suit us or we want something that we know the Lord wouldn't want us to have. We have to be firm. We have to be direct. We have to be focused. Set our minds on things above and ahead, not on things which are transitory, which are passing away. And then when we do this, it says, when we humble ourselves before the Lord, he will exalt us. 
not necessarily now, but our eternal reward with him in heaven forever. One Timothy six says, fight the good fight of faith. Life can be a battle. As I was mentioning, the battle of the thoughts, the temptations of the world. Remember that the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. The image of God in you, your walk with him, your relationship with him and with others. And you'll find that when you follow the Lord, not everybody will be very happy about it, particularly those who are following the Lord of darkness. But it's by faith and trust in him that we can fight and prevail. Continues, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. People know whether we are following the Lord or not. Because they will see a change in us. They will see fruit in our lives to bless others and to love the Lord. But if we are like everybody else and just self-centered, gossips, manipulative, controlling, oh, the list goes on, that's no testimony, that's no witness for the Lord. We don't just confess with our lips, it should be shown in our lives. But if we're proud and puffed up, well, that's like everybody else in the world. It continues, I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the confession to keep the commandment unstained, free from reproach until the appearing again of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. We have to keep our faith and belief and trust in the Lord unstained and free from reproach. If we're like everybody else, People sneer at us and say, oh, where is your God? If we don't allow the Lord to move in our lives and hearts, what good is that? If we don't worship him in spirit and in truth, what good is that? We're just following mindless, man-made religion. So let the Lord touch your heart today. Humble yourselves before him. If you find that difficult, repent of pride. If you want to know whether your characteristic of humility is in your life, just look to see whether you have a servant heart, whether you see others better than yourselves, whether you're willing to take the lowly place and serve others and not your ego or not your wants. And when you do that, the Lord will draw near to you 
and by the power of his Holy Spirit, bless you so that you may be a blessing. So my prayer for you today is go and do likewise. So until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.